This video is brought to you and sponsored by Bad Gimme. Balance all three game modes individually. Let the game modes balance themselves, not each other. What's going on you guys? Bring your friends here. Today I wanted to make a video talking about how to increase build diversity in Guild Wars 2. I know I haven't uh, made any videos in quite some time because I haven't been playing the game, but now I've caught up with things and it's essentially the same thing. Uh, if you're not picking the elite specializations, you're essentially just forced out of the meta. So this is going to be a guide and improvements to revert exactly that. But I must say one thing before we even get into it. You have to balance all three game modes individually if you are to achieve anything. Because there's no way you can ever achieve balance, at least in SPVP with a competitive scene if you have to worry about world v world and pve so that being said let's get right into it uh right now it's talking about weapon changes so basically making more weapons that wouldn't even be given a second thought more viable and be used in guild wars 2 when it comes to mes and these are all just mesmer changes so offhand sword illusionary repast block incoming attacks for a short duration and create an illusion when attacked Damage 36, block duration 1.5 seconds. So I'm basically improving offhand swords. So instead of just blocking one attack, you're blocking for 1.5 seconds. This is the kicker though for Counterblade. I'll just swap to offhand sword here. Counterblade, swap places with the illusion created by Illusionary Repost and release the energy by your blocked attack in an area of effect by stabbing your sword in the ground, knocking enemies down within the radius. Uh, I have in quotations here. The animation will be similar to Greatsword 3, except with the after effect of the blade shooting out of the ground. You'll only have a 5 second window to swap after a successful block. Same amount of time as Main Hand Sword 3. Damage 710, radius 240, max targets knocked down 3. Knockdown time 1 second, range 600, cast time 3 fourths of a second. You can cast this while moving. So essentially, what this is going to be is I block. And a successful successful attack, and then I shit out a clone. He runs at you. Now you can actually swap with your clone, do AOE damage that knocks down a maximum of three targets within a 600 range. It still has the same cast time as Counter Blade, so you can still be interrupted while you do it. So, just straight up improving sword. Phantasmal Swordsman. This ability is now summoned on the target, similar to Phantasmal Berserker. This is probably the crappiest phantasm in the game because it doesn't takes 10 years to get to your actual target. I can go and take a shower and do some laundry and by the time I come back, the phantasm still wouldn't have actually ran to the target yet because it's slower than old people fuck. Shield! Tides of Time! Well, let's just put it on just for dramatic effect. Tides of time! This skill no longer stuns enemies on its return trip. However, touching the wave still reduces the cooldown of this skill. And then I just have notes that being able to stun up to 10 people is pretty absurd in my opinion. So, cutting that in half to 5. Offhand focus! Phantasmal Warden! This phantasm now changes its or chases its target until destroyed or shattered. There's no stop and go animation between attacks. Meaning, if you summon the Warden and the enemy literally moves three feet away once it starts attacking, it is essentially useless. So now it will continuously chase its target until shattered or destroyed. Going into Domination. Imagine Burden, which is this guy right here. Basically, I completely redesigned it. Your greatsword skills are improved. I'll just throw on a greatsword. Spatial Surge. Number of targets increased from 3 to 4. Mirror Blade. Gives 4 stacks of mine instead of 3. Mind Stab. Removes 2 boons from foes. Removes 1 condition from you if you are in within the skill's radius. Phantasmal Berserker. Number of impacts increased from 4 to 5. And Illusionary Wave. Knockback increased from 450 to 600. Moving on. Blur blurred Inscriptions. Conditions removed are... Conditions removed increase from 1 to 2. Mental Anguish. Shatter skills deal more damage. This damage increase is higher against foes that have 20 or more stacks of vulnerability. Damage increase 15%. Damage increase versus with 20 stacks of vulnerability. Ugh, I can't even talk today. Or more, 35%. So essentially, 
it's not going to work with containing suggestions anymore based off of days it's going to work with stacking vulnerability on your target power block interrupt still damage and inflict a weakness enemy skills that you interrupt have increased cooldown note if you interrupt a school that skill that has no recharge weakness duration is increased from 5 seconds to 7.5 seconds so essentially the whole point of power block now is to give incentive versus class that have skills with no recharge such as thief for example uh, in my example I just increased the weakness by two and a half seconds you could increase the damage on power block as well against classes that have no recharge skills like thieves like it's basically you're giving people more of an incentive to choose power block against classes such as thieves because if you take power block and there is no thief then there is no reason to take power block just that simple uh, going into dueling duelist discipline chance to bleed has been increased to 66 percent fencers finesse I kind of improve the functionality of fencers defense gain a stacking ferocity effect when you successfully block with offhand sword illusionary repost or when you or one of your illusion strikes with main hand sword reduces the recharge on sword skills maximum stacks 20 instead of 10 and then obviously the recharge of 20 percent is still the same so essentially you'll you are just giving offhand sword more functionality when it comes to specking into fencer's defense more maximum stacks and now you can with each attack blocked with illusionary repost you gain a ferocity stack inspiration warden's feedback is now in the place of temporal enchanter and then going on warden's feedback your focus skills have been improved Focus recharge reduced by 20%. Now on Temporal Curtain. Now also grants super speed to yourself and allies for 3 seconds upon first enemy. And reflects projectiles into the void. Now cripples foes upon activation. Damages all foes based off how many enemies are pulled. So max number of foes crippled 5. Cripple duration 3 seconds. Void damage for one enemy, 210. For two enemies, 231. For three enemies, 252. For four enemies, 273. And for five enemies, 294. So, for example, if I were to pull four enemies successfully with Into the Void, all enemies would take 273 damage. So they would all take the same damage. Obviously, the damage would be different if you were to crit one enemy and not the other, obviously. So, moving on, Chronomancer. Illusionary Reversion, Bug Fix, Elaborate. So with Illusionary Reversion, shattering at least two illusions generates a clone. But the problem with this is that, say if I have two clones and I mine rack, and the enemy is where my mouse cursor is currently at, while they are running to the target, I could cry frustration, diversion, and distortion, and still gain clones regardless if I have zero illusions, because since the two clones that I hit with mine rack are still running to the target the game still thinks those two illusions are alive regardless if I hit the button press for mine rack so basically you have to change the overall mechanic of shatter to where if I were to mine rack the game considers those illusions dead so therefore I cannot gain the clone generation of illusionary reversion regardless if my two clones that I mind racked made it to the target so it's essentially just cleaning up the functionality of shatter based off of not having to code where the clones are currently running to but if I hit mind rack they're gone that's it I gain no no benefit from illusionary reversion because they should be you know straight up shattered okay moving on continuum split this increase durate, or, uh, cooldown has been increased from 90 seconds to 110 seconds. And then Signet of Humility. The duration on Moa Morph has been decreased from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. And I think that's pretty much it for Chronomancer. 
Moving on to chaos. I don't really have much for chaos. It's just one minor tidbit. Mirror of Anguish. When disabled by stun, daze, knockback, pull, knockdown, sink, float, fear, taunt, or launch, your next attack will mimic whatever control effect you are affected by to the enemy. So, for example, the enemy hits me with stun. I'm stunned. But now I will get a on-screen proc, say, like a signet. And then, say, if I swing on the enemy and miss, the on-screen proc will be gone. So now the enemy knows that I don't have the on-screen proc from Mirror of Anguish any longer, and business can continue as usual. I mean, I've never really been a fan of just passive... Like, if you're going to have a passive trait, fucking put it here. Don't make it to where I could choose a passive. That's just... I don't know. It's just lazy. So... Yeah, so the whole point of this video is to basically make it to where I shouldn't have to be forced to go Chronomancer in order to be viable in the current meta. This is basically to promote, like, Chronomancer should be an add-on of diversity, not restricting diversity. Because the way it is now, it's like, okay, well I have to choose Chronomancer, what other two trees can I choose? That's not the way things should work in my opinion. You should be able to make any build, regardless if it's Chrono Phantasma or not. That's the whole point of diversity, is to expand upon it, not to restrict it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed my suggestions. Let me know uh, what you think in the comments, or down below. I'll probably be posting on the forums as well. And, you probably won't be seeing any uh, content from me, at least for Guild Wars 2, in quite some time, because I don't enjoy playing this game uh, the way it is at the moment. Like, the league system rewards anybody. Uh, pretty much everybody I've seen in the mist has Legendary, which doesn't reflect upon player's skill in my opinion. There's no way that everyone ha just became a hero in the short time that I was gone, which means the system's broken. Not to mention the fact that Conquest is still the only game mode even worth mentioning. Not to mention that Power Creep has basically made it to where elite specializations are straight up needed in order to become viable which is the reason why I'm making this video to begin with but I'm rambling on too long this is Countless Bringing Friends thanks for watching I'm out of here adios